Hello, my name is Travis and I'm a noob just like you. That's what makes me the perfect candidate to present this video series called GitHub for Noobs. To GitHub for Noobs. We're gonna be looking at the wonderful world of Git, the version control system, and GitHub, the popular service that makes creating, developing, and sharing code fun and easy. Let's start with a short history of Git. As with many great things in life, Git began with a bit of creative destruction and fiery controversy. Our story begins in 1991 with the creation of the Linux kernel. The Linux kernel is an open source software project of fairly large scope. For most of the lifetime of the Linux kernel, maintenance changes to the software were passed around as patches and archived files. In 2002, the Linux kernel began using a proprietary DCVS, or distributed version control system, called BitKeeper. In 2005, the relationship between the community that developed the Linux kernel and the commercial company that developed BitKeeper broke down and the tool's free of charge status was revoked. This prompted the Linux development community, and in particular Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, to develop their own tool based on some of the lessons that they learned while using BitKeeper. Some of the goals of the new system were as follows. Speed, simple design, strong support for non-linear development, maintaining thousands of parallel branches, fully distributed, and able to handle large projects like the Linux kernel efficiently, both in terms of speed and data size. Since its birth in 2005, Git has grown and matured to be easy to use and yet retain all of those initial qualities. It's incredibly fast, it's very efficient with large projects, and it has an incredible branching system for non-linear development. Git is free and open source and primarily used on the command line, and that's why it's kind of super scary for us noobs, but don't worry, we'll get into that later. Now, GitHub is a for-profit company, not to be confused with the open source technology called Git. GitHub was formed and work began on the platform in late 2007. The company was originally named Logical Awesome. In February 2008, the company was officially changed to GitHub. In June of 2011, GitHub became the largest code repository service, surpassing SourceForge, Google Code, and Microsoft's CodePlex in total number of commits. In September of 2015, GitHub reported 10 million users, adding new users at a rate of 10,000 per day. In addition to the functions of Git, GitHub offers additional tools, such as web-based graphical user interface and desktop, as well as mobile integration. It also provides access control and several collaboration features, such as bug tracking, feature requests, task management, and wikis for every project. GitHub.com offers plans for both private repositories and free accounts, which are usually used to host open source software projects. This channel, DevTips, has several GitHub repos. You can find them at github.com slash devtips. Thanks for watching this short history of and difference between Git and GitHub. Next week we'll be looking at how Git is used and some of the common functions. So my name is Travis and I produce all of these videos late into the night in my poorly insulated garage for you because I like you. These videos are supported by fans like you who go to patreon.com slash devtips and pledge a buck or two for every video that I make. Patrons get extra perks like early videos, they get extra videos, and a really great community chat. If you find these videos helpful and want to donate and join that little community, come join us at patreon.com slash devtips. That is it for today. I'll see you next week, and until then, keep on hacking.